then hope you forget about how wrong they were. But not Mackie and Judd. Write this down. This is the big leagues, where we own our terrible predictions. Write that down. And keep track of each other's batting averages. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. That's right. The only show, shows, I should say, in America that actually keeps track of our predictions every single week. We've expanded the franchise. Classic Write That Down as part of Mackie and Judd every Wednesday, as we've done for years. And now also every Wednesday on Purple Daily, football-centric predictions, football-centric, write that down. Uh, So that'll be fun today as well. But gentlemen, we're going to welcome in in a little bit here, Dustin L. He's going to be the guest listener predictor. If you guys want, if you're out there and you want to be a guest listener predictor on either Mackie and Judd, write that down, or Purple Daily, you can just send a DM to me, at Phil Mackie, or at Dex's tweets on Twitter. and. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. That sounded like a voicemail message. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. And I think we're coming to a part in the sports schedule here. Baseball games are going to start up again soon. We've got NFL free agency and draft where it's been kind of a slow year for things coming off the board. But boys, I, I can sense a rush of accountability on the horizon here. Oh, boy. Why? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Should we get to it? Yeah, let's see it. All right, we'll start with Judd. Oh, that's nice. Good news for Judd. I thought you were teasing like a bloodbath. Uh, You might not be the one that's having the bloodbath. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. All right. All right, Judd said Jake Odorizzi will leave the Twins as a free agent after the 2020 season. That was correct. Congratulations, Judd. Um, you'll uh, you'll be increasing your batting average. You are last year's defending batting average and home run champion. So that's yeah. big time. All right, let's get to let's get to myself here. I had a couple things come off the board. I told you guys Kyle Rudolph will tweet <laughs> something about Kirk Cousins between now and next oh. week's. Write that down. No, what? he wasn't too concerned about how that looked. Dude. Dear Players Tribune, I still hate him. Bye. What does that th- think about that for a second? Okay. What does that signify that he writes the 2000 word article and he names multiple quarterbacks, including Matt Castle, that he just loved playing with, right? He mentioned Sam Bradford and this- Castle's the greatest human being I ever met. <laughs> he doesn't mention Kirk Cousins. It gets yep. talked about. I think, you know, I, I sent a tweet out that I'm I'm sure I'm sure he saw the talk about whether it was us or somebody else. Right. Right. And in that instance, if you felt bad about the omission or if it was a mistake, that would have been the week sometime in those seven days to be like, Oh my God, Kirky boy. He's my guy. 13 touchdown passes to me. It's been great. So he consciously chose to not mention Kirk on the way out. When you write 2000 words, which I guarantee he wrote months ago and you probably have reread that 18 times before it gets published there are no mistakes made there are no mistakes made there are only passes that weren't throw to 82 and he will never forget that he clearly blames kirk to a certain degree for for his drop off right like that's pretty clear now right or wrong kubiak's i don't know zimmer i don't know but kyle clearly looks at kirk and says that was part of the reason why i didn't get as many balls thrown my way yep it's amazing. All right. The other prediction that came off the board for me, I have become the bachelor whisperer here on the show. I know Declan, Declan's hoping one of his predictions that I'll have five incorrect back bachelor predictions. But if I keep running hot like this, I told you guys the final two contestants on the bachelor would be Michelle and Rachel, not a home run in retrospect, because this was predicted like two weeks ago, but it's a correct prediction. It's a yeah. hit for the bachelor whisperer. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Right, yeah. Whoa! What? I, I, there's no facetiousness there. I, I'm being yes, honest. there was. No, you're oh, like good for you. No, no, good for you. I'm glad that you've copied my bachelor predictions, and yours are right. Yeah. What did did, wow. did 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 insincere Judd take uh, insincere Declan yeah. under his wing in the last week? Well, I'm proud of you. I think that your time, <laughs> that the time you, you have wasted in your life watching this Drek, I'm glad oh. to see that that it's helped you. Drek, dude, those That's are fighting ter- words. Yeah, those it's are. Ter- fighting it's a terrible. It's a terrible show. I don't By the way, <laughs> you're in Seattle. Who do I care? What, what does it say? What does it say for me that I'm better at predicting bachelor outcomes than Minnesota sports outcomes? Yeah, it says a lot. It says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right, listeners. So we had uh, Devlin, Ultimate Twins fan Devlin, had a parlay. He said three WrestleMania matches. He's trying to predict three WrestleMania matches. 
Edge versus Randy Orton, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, and Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Now, there's still some things that could shake out, but they are all in on the Edge versus Roman Reigns angle right now. And I don't think uh, I don't think that's going to change. So if that changes, we'll take this off the board. But Declan or uh, Devlin, you are incorrect. Now to Declan. Speaking of bloodbaths, look at this zero for two situation yeah. here. Declan said by next Wednesday morning, so the start of today's. Write that down. The Wild will be in first place in the Western Division. Mm-hmm. That is not the case. And then you also said KG will be a partial owner of the Timberwolves and there will be another prominent sports athlete attached to his group. Well, yeah. I think we can probably rule that out after right. last week's exchange. Yeah. And you, Glenn Taylor. That's okay. That's all right. I'll, I'll take my L's there. I'll can't, tell you guys. Can't at all. I got a text message from somebody um, high up with the Timberwolves mm-hmm. a couple days ago. And it was one of those I was like, oh, man, what's. They said, you know how you can just sort of read the first sentence of a text before you open the whole thing? Right. And the first sentence said, hey, I heard Judd and Declan talking about the wolves. And then it was dot, dot, dot. Like I didn't, Then I had to open it to see the rest. Oh, I'm like, wow. oh, my God, what's this going to be? And, and this person said, essentially, hard to disagree. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and that might have been from the, the whole thing that we did on the fact that Glenn has to sell the team now and we don't care. <laughs> Roll the dice. If they move it to Seattle, they move it. If it goes to Quebec, it goes. But roll the dice. So from from Jaden McDaniel's predictions to ownership group, I mean, if if you need a consultant, Minnesota Timberwolves, by all means, call me up. I, I I'll take as much income and, and opportunity yeah, as I yes, can you right will. Now. Yes, you will. Yeah, Declan. I we love should, the Wolves. Wolves are I'll run great. We should get Declan some business cards. Timberwolves consultant, yeah. just go yeah. around. All right, so uh, so those are the things that came off the board. These are the 2021 stats. Judd Zolgad leading in uh, batting average with a 478 average and one home run. Declan doing pretty well, 423 with one home run. I'm sitting at 333 no home runs. Listeners at 111 with no home runs. The all-time career stats, This the game goes back to like 2015. Much like baseball stats being shady in the 1800s, we didn't really start tracking things specifically until 2018. What, what's my war? <laughs> Figure out my war, my Babbitt. What's my Babbitt? <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get our analytics crew to do some number crunching. So Judd has 151 career hits and nine home runs. I have 116 career hits and 10 home runs. Listeners, 90 career hits and nine home runs. And uh, second year Declan has 42 hits and oh, yeah. three home runs. Should we get our guy Dustin in here? Guest listener Dustin. What's going on with you, man? What's your strategy today? Uh, I think I'm going to hit some homers here. Oh, yeah. I love it. Like love that? Swinging for the fences. So we're going to go around the room. Three predictions each. We'll start with Dustin. We'll go Judd, Declan, and then back to me, Phil Mackey. They must be quantifiable uh, and or have an end date of some kind, ideally. And we'll start off with Dustin. Lead us off, sir. Well, actually, based on track record, this first one could be a fun single. But I'm doing this to put uh, some reverse psychology into the world here. Mm-hmm. My prediction is the Twins losing streak, playoff losing streak, will hit at least 19 games. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, that's... Um, I certainly I mean, don't it, want it to happen, but, uh, you know, so that's why I said reverse psychology. Get that out in the in the atmosphere here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Judd. All right. Um, I, I'm going to make a prediction that I think Declan has made, so I've added to it. Okay. Kirill Kaprizov will win the Calder Trophy as the National Hockey League Rookie of the Year, and Kapo Kakinen will finish in the top five of the voting. Did I say top ten? Or I thought I said. I think I said. Uh, I said Kap- Kaprizov would win Caldeer, and I thought I also said top five. But I'll. But we'll, I'll, I'll write it down for you right now. Okay. And, so yeah. And if you have to change it next week, we'll. we'll you know, we'll address that. But that's um, fine. Oh, so yes. So so Kaprizov wins. Um, the trophy. Yep. And Kapo Kakinen, uh finishes in the top five for now, at least, of the voting for the uh, Calder okay. Trophy that goes for the Rookie of the Year. All right. I like it. I like it. I'm Declan, I'm looking for your prediction here. When did you predict? I think I predicted that either, either last week or with, within the last couple of weeks, I'm pretty sure. So... I didn't know if if you had Capo and and uh, Kirill Kaprizov tied together. That's okay. the one thing I didn't know. Well, yeah, no, I, I definitely had a prediction that was, that was very similar. I know similar. you had Similar one to of it. them at least. No, okay. but I think it's a good one. I mean, write this down. Do. All right, uh, I'll go with my first prediction here. The Wild will win at least three 
of their next four games. So write that down. The Wild will win three of their next four games. They have, what, four still left on this homestand. One more against Vegas tonight. Write it down. You like writing things down. Three more against Arizona, I believe, Judd, to conclude the homestand. Yeah, I can't wait to see the Coyotes three yeah, times. Yeah, me too. Uh, but the Wild will win yep. at, at least three right. of their next four mm. games. Write that down. Write it down. You mm. like writing things down. You might have. To, I don't know. I feel. I, I. I'm looking through here, and I don't know if it's my mistake or if it wasn't in the. Oh, uh, you, you, have, you have forgotten some predictions that I've hit before, so I. You know, maybe maybe you did. Maybe you did forget it. You know, I don't mean to shoot the messenger here. Or maybe you didn't make it, and uh, I. I just came up with a gem. Or maybe he, you did. He, here are the last six I have for Declan from the last few weeks. Yep. One of the three remaining Bachelor contestants will voluntarily leave before the show ends. Yep. So Miguel, Sin- Miguel Sano will land on the injured list this season before Byron Buxton does. The Wild will be in first place before next week's write that down. Mm-hmm. And then I've got Bruce Boudreaux will be the next head coach of the Kraken. Mm-hmm. The women's tell all uh, on The Bachelor, MJ will call out Jasenia, and Zach Parisi will score a power play goal between now and next week. That didn't work. Um, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do some digging. I'll do some, I'll do some scoopage. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll I mean, you can, you can put it on the board if if we can we can definitely throw it on here if I if I'm yeah. missing it. So I don't want to I don't want to take away any any wild prediction momentum that you may have going. Oh, for sure, absolutely, yeah. And I haven't been hitting well there. So yeah, I, I, I'll find it. I'll find it. Okay. Fun. All right. Write this down. The next Gophers basketball coach will be either Brian Dutcher or Nico Medved. Okay. Now I will add, there's a story today, I think, in the Pioneer Press about how it's been 14 years since the University of Minnesota Athletic Department has hired a black person. So um, there's going to be pressure, rightfully so, on that athletic department to find a little more diversity in some of these hires. But I think my guess is they're they're probably pretty far down the road, like in terms of their process with some of these obvious names like Brian Dutcher and Nico Medved. So it'll be either Brian Dutcher or Nico Medved. Write that down. All okay. Right. All right, back to Dustin. All right, so Phil, you just hijacked me. Um, I had a go for basketball coach prediction. So do you want me to to use it? Because I have a few more names on my list, or do you want me to... Uh... So I, my prediction is the next go for basketball coach will be either Nico Medved, Craig Smith of Utah State, who's also a native Minnesotan, mm-hmm. or Dennis Gates of Cleveland State, um, who just made it to the NCAA attorney. You're good. Yeah, the rule is if you if you're gonna make the same prediction as somebody else that week, you have to add to it. So you're good. You're good. Who was the second guy you said, Dustin? Uh, Craig Smith of Utah State. Cool. Okay. And do we need to clarify that we mean for the upcoming season? Because what happens if Tino is still the coach? Uh, um, yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> I think we're all just assuming that he's not going to be the coach. Yeah. So so what would happen is. If he's still the coach, then these predictions would stay on the board until he's no longer the coach and they hire a new coach. It's the Larry Brown rule. Larry Brown. It just sits there. So I, I want I want mine to end. So I want to add in for the upcoming 2020. You do you? Like, I think Judd has a prediction that, uh, that Jim Harbaugh will be the next Bears head coach. And, and the assumption there was that they would be looking for a coach this offseason. Well, right. It'll be next year now. Yeah. Stays It'll on the board. Next year. It'll be for 2022. Board. All right. My second write that down prediction. Write that down. Luis Arise will lead the Twins in batting average this season. Luis Arise will lead the Twins in batting average for the 2021 season. Write this down. All right. I can see that. I think last year was supposed to be right. He's going to be the Tony Gwynn. He's, he's the That's modern right. day. Yeah, Tony I think. Gwynn. Less pressure to do so, and and he can hit. So okay, sure. I like it. Write it down. You like writing things down. Uh, back over to me. Brett Rooker will make the Twins' opening day roster, but Alex Kirloff will not. So Brett Rooker will make the opening day roster. Oh. Alex Kirloff will that not. Down. Write that down. You know why? Cheap poll ads. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's it's hard to it's hard to disagree with that notion. If their if their goal is to win a bunch of games this year. I don't know. Maybe Alex Kirilov has to work on his secondary leadoffs at first base or something. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Write this down. Dan Bailey, cut by the Vikings yesterday. Dan Bailey will kick against the Vikings this season. I will say either in the preseason or in the regular season, 
or in the postseason. So I'm going to include all potential wow. football games the Vikings may play in. Because listen, I, I'm just looking for a Dan Bailey revenge game. I don't give a rip if it happens in the second preseason game or in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Will Dan- he just stipulate towards the sideline <laughs> after making a f- field goal like Blair Wal- like Blair Walsh did to Zim, I believe, in a Seattle preseason game? Well, little, little DX shot. He did that. Blair Walsh. He did. Blair yeah. Walsh made some type of yep. bleep you to Zimmer sign. Worked out really well for him, by the way. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, it was a good move. It was a great career move. Too. Gardner's really helped the out for you. Yeah. So Dan Bailey in Dan Bailey will kick against the Vikings at some point during this upcoming season, and he will not miss a kick in that game. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> I okay. It. I like it. <laughs> Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, back to Dustin. Uh, for my last prediction, uh, Gopher football will win the Big Ten West this year. I like what Ooh. they have coming back on offense with the return of uh, Falele and Dunlap on the offensive line, plus a Braham, uh, Ibrahim as the running back. I think uh, Tanner Morgan goes back to his uh, 2019 self with another year under Sanford as the OC, and, and hopefully Rossi can get the defense fix, fixed. And if all that stuff happens, they will win the Big Ten West. Write it down. You like writing things down. And if that happens, the Gophers will probably play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game. And you know what? All I have asked for since that game, I think that game's been in existence for like 10 years now or something. All I've said is my expectations for Gophers football are pretty low. Just get to that game and get beat by 50 by Ohio State, and I will and I will be satisfied. Just get to that game. If Northwestern can get there two out of the last three years, why the heck can't the Gophers get there? Well, that's very true. Yeah. But here's what I come on. Before we die a Rose Bowl berth, it uh, and not when it's part of the college football playoff. That's all I want. I still want a Rose What's Bowl. What's wrong berth. with the Meineke Car Bowl and the Sun Bowls? I don't know what you I'm guys are talking so about. So sick of that crap. Oh, okay. All Do you right, guys remember my- though? Do you guys remember the Micron PC dot com bowl? Yeah, by the way, of course. In fact, that was uh, I believe that was North Carolina State, right? I, I think that's the game that Doogie went to. I think that was Corn Robinson, Philip Rivers, right? Oh, nice. man. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joe, before you make your final prediction, Dustin, since you have this platform, is there anyone in your life that you would like to thank that got you to this point? I'm just going to say the same thing I did last time I was a guest predictor. I want to thank you guys for uh, giving this Minnesotan living in Chicago his uh, Minnesota sports fix. So. You guys keep doing you and uh, love listening to all your shows. And um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Right on. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate you taking your swings. All right. My final prediction, because the law of averages say it has to happen at some point. Okay. The Wild will score two or more power play goals before the next write that down. They have four games during that time. (laughs) The Wild will score two or more power play goals before the next write that down. I've tried this twice and both times it's failed me. But at some point, like you're playing the Coyotes, it, a puck has to just go in the net and go off somebody's ass. As we discussed on Judd's hockey show, I don't know, Phil, if you saw this, but the worst power play of all time in a regular season is by the Lightning in '98, and it was nine and a half percent. The Wild right now are at six. <laughs> <laughs> They're on pace to shatter the NHL power play record. Write it down. You like writing things down. Okay, and, and I and I did I did hear you throw that out on Judd's hockey show. Uh, it's hilarious. But it has to regress. And by regress, I just mean move toward the mean. Like yes. right. a puck has to go off somebody. Yeah. Like shooting the if you're shooting the puck at the goalie, something is going to happen, right? Like just as by pa- as, as Patrick Royce would say, hockey is random. It yeah. just depends on a puck going off someone's breezers. A goaltender. But it, it's like Three point shots in basketball. At some point in time, you're just going to hit some. The Rockets, they started to hit some, right? Yeah. Except for the one game. So anyway. write it down. You like writing things down. It's a good transition because my final write that down is also a wild power play. And it's probably a single, to be honest. Uh, by the end of the regular season, the Wild's power play percentage will be no higher than 10%. Jeez. Wow. So by the end of the regular season, the Wild's power play percentage will be no higher than 10%. Percent. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right. So before I make this, I, I might pivot here because I might make it three power play predictions in a row. I just want to ask the experts in the room real quick here. Do you think they're getting unlucky or do you think there's something systematically wrong with the way that they go about their power play? Systematically wrong. You you aren't this bad for this long with, without something being wrong. Uh, so I do. Luck is involved, but I also think 
10 games is just bad luck. We're at what, Declan? 23 games yeah, now? Almost 25 or so. You might suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might just yeah. be god awful. All right. In that case, the, the wild will not by by this time next week, the wild will have zero power play goals between now and this time next week. I'm gonna wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy into the Judd's hockey show discussion here. So wow. those are your write that down predictions for the week. And again, if you want to be part of the segment, if you want to take your swings either on this show or on Purple Daily, you can send a DM to at Phil Mackey or at Dex's tweets on Twitter, and we will we'll get back to you and get you scheduled. I think we're we're pretty packed through like April Dex, something yeah, like that. Through May 1st, and then I'll, I'm going to start adding more. But yeah, we're, we're packed all the way through April, and then we'll have openings in May. What do you, what do you, what do you, very impressive. No, it's oh, impressive. You're shaking your head no, it's me. like a great restaurant. You can't get in. I can't get into That's the right. write that down restaurant. You know someone, you know, the I chef. just want the steak. No, you can't get, yeah, exactly. You know the right. hostess. You hey, I, I know Declan. The host, I know the, ho I know Declan. I know you him. know, somebody <laughs> slip me a 20. I'll get you in next week. Okay. <laughs> and Judd will put some cool whip on whatever food you order oh, too. Oh, no, no, <laughs> cool whip. All right. No. <laughs> The show's over. The show's over. That's a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with us. Go up.